Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 major movie plot holes. Welcome to Hogwarts. Now, in a few moments, you will pass through these doors and join your classmates. But before you can take your seats, you must be sorted into your houses. For this list, we'll be looking at the most glaringly obvious plot holes from popular films. We won't be including Titanic, despite the common misconception that Rose could have just moved over. Jack did indeed try to get on the door. What do you make of these plot holes? Do they ruin the story for you? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Electro doesn't know Peter is Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home. The storytelling of the MCU got increasingly complex as it progressed, eventually incorporating the likes of time travel and multiverses. Unfortunately, as is often the case with time-hoppy stories, this opened up a slew of questions and potential plot holes. No Way Home has great fun with its manipulation of dimensions, but it also has a wicked plot hole concerning Jamie Foxx's Electro. I got my body back. Hey, um, it's gonna sound really crazy, but uh, this isn't your universe. Doctor Strange informs us that only the villains who know Spider-Man's identity were pulled through the multiverse. But Electro never knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and he says as much during the climax. You got a nice face, you're just a kid. Yeah. You from Queens. You got that suit. You help a lot of poor people. I just thought you was going to be black. So why is he here? Probably just so we could see Jamie Foxx again. We can't be too mad about that. Number 19. The Unrecognizable Teenager. 17 again. As the title suggests, this movie sees a fully grown man named Mike O'Donnell turning back into his 17-year-old self with the help of some magic. Ah! It's established at the beginning of the film that Mike and his high school sweetheart, Scarlett, eventually wed and had kids. Yet when Scarlett meets the younger version of Mike, she barely reacts. Yes, she notices there's a similarity between the two, but she kind of shrugs it off. We know it's been two decades, but surely she would have instantly recognized the teenage version of her own husband. She was even dating him at the time that he looked exactly like this. Heck, one look at the yearbook would prove that it's more than just a strong resemblance. Oh. How are you doing? Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Wow, it's gonna take some getting used to. Number 18. Whistler's Resurrection. Blade 2. This might be an example of a sequel bringing back a fan favorite character, even if it doesn't make a lick of sense within the context of the story. In the first Blade, Abraham Whistler is infected and takes his own life for the special vampire killing bullet. We even see Whistler's hand dropping, indicating that he's dead. Yet, Blade 2 opens with the titular hero saving his mentor from confinement in Prague. Apparently, Whistler was too late with the gunshot, as he had already started transforming. But that doesn't add up, because the bullets in that gun are explicitly designed to kill vampires and turn them into ash. Why was Whistler immune to it? And why was he still intact? Let's go. Number 17. Time Proof Jets – Battlefield Earth This is not a film to be taken very seriously, despite what filmmakers' intentions might have been. It's widely considered one of the worst movies ever made, and the story is riddled with plot holes. While you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxy. The most glaring has to be the issue with Jets. The movie takes place in the year 3000, with humans subservient to a gold mining race of aliens. Johnny Goodboy Tyler starts a revolution against the oppressors and steals some Harrier jets. Not only do the revolutionaries become expert jet flyers after just one week of simulation training, but the jets also retain their ability to function after a thousand years of stagnation. We're not jet experts or anything, but we don't think Harriers would still operate after sitting underground for a millennium. These are flying machines, no weapons of some kind. Flying spears. I think there's a little more to it than that. Number 16. The Facehugger. Alien 3. It's never a good sign when a director disowns their movie. 
David Fincher is not a fan of Alien 3, and some fans consider the opening sequence a travesty of the canon. The story begins in somber fashion, with Newt and Hicks dying in a pod crash. The escape pod was jettisoned from the Sulaco owing to the presence of a facehugger, which emerged from an egg that the alien queen had somehow planted in the previous movie. But did she? She didn't bring any eggs from the nest, and even if she did, she didn't appear to have any time to emerge from the dropship and plant one aboard the Sulaco. There's simply no logical way that the egg ended up on the spaceship. There was one survivor, two dead, and a droid that was hopelessly smashed beyond repair. Number 15. Cypher plugs himself in. The Matrix. This movie is about as close to sci-fi perfection as you can get, but alas, there appears to be a glaring issue. Cypher meets with Agent Smith inside what's presumably the Matrix to discuss his betrayal of Morpheus and Zion. I'll get you what you want. Access codes to the Zion mainframe. No, I told you I don't know them. I can get you the man who does. However, Cypher would have theoretically needed someone to plug him and take him back out again. Therefore, his betrayal would have been revealed to whoever's monitoring him. Cypher's usually in charge of operating, so maybe he constructed some kind of function, allowing him to enter and exit without help, which is why he's so startled when Neo interrupts him? But that's pure speculation, and isn't made clear. And what about getting to broadcast depth without a captain's order or knowledge? Maybe he was actually in a construct, and working with the machines and the agents? Who knows? God damn you, Cypher. Don't hate me, Trinity. I'm just a messenger. Number 14. The Prince's Age. Beauty and the Beast. Even Disney's masterpiece isn't without mistakes. It's made clear in the prologue that the Beast had until his 21st year to find true love as the petals of an enchanted rose would begin to fall once he turned that age. The rose she had offered was truly an enchanted rose which would bloom until his 21st year. Later, Lumiere mentions that they have been stuck inside the castle without guests for a decade, seemingly placing the beast around 10 or 11 when the curse was set. There appears to be a few problems with this, though. One, what is with that enchantress putting a curse on a preteen? Rebelliousness is normal at that age and certainly not worth a wicked curse. Admittedly, social norms towards kids were different back in the 18th century, but still. And two, the Beast rips apart a portrait of himself, and the portrait shows a man much older than 10 or 11. Yeah, people seem to age faster back in the 1700s, but not that fast. Ashamed of his monstrous form, the Beast concealed himself inside his castle. Number 13. What happened to the crew? The Lost World, Jurassic Park. While this sequel fails to measure up to its iconic predecessor, it nevertheless contains a riveting climax. A T-Rex is brought back to the mainland and wreaks havoc through the streets of San Diego. That's not the problem. The problem is how it got there. Look, that's their transponder signal, Venture 5888. They're headed into port, but I can't raise them. When the ship arrives at port, the entire crew is dead. There's no damage to the ship, and the T-Rex is still confined in the hold. So, just what the heck happened to everybody? The answer reportedly lies in a deleted scene. The idea was to have velociraptors infiltrate the ship and kill everyone, but this scene was abandoned. However, other sources claim this is incorrect and that the storyboards sent to auction demonstrate instead that the T-Rex somehow got loose and unleashed the destruction. Neither scenario is shown or referenced, though, meaning that the inclusion of the aftermath of a removed attack resulted in a plot hole. God. Where's the crew? All over the place. Number 12. The Issue with Time. Gremlins. Time can be a pain in the neck, what with the different zones and daylight savings and whatnot, but does it bother the Mogwai? These little creatures come with three important rules, one of which is to never feed them after midnight. And probably the most important thing, don't ever feed him after midnight. Okay, that's fine in theory, but what exactly constitutes midnight? What happens when daylight savings begins and the clocks go forward an hour? 
Does the Mogwai's conception of midnight become the new 12 o'clock, or does it stay the old 11 o'clock? Furthermore, what happens if someone enters a new time zone with their Mogwai? Does the rule take on the boundaries of the new time zone? Does midnight suddenly become 5 a.m. in England? The questions are endless. Did you get them wet or something? No. Did you feed them after midnight? Number 11. The Conservation of Mass Ant-Man the problem with superhero movies is that they often fly in the face of logic. We don't typically mind, but Ant-Man falls into a lot of traps when it comes to physics. The biggest offender is that the movie seemingly ignores its own rules about the conservation of mass. When your small energy is compressed, so you have the force of a 200-pound man behind a fist a hundredth of an inch wide, you're like a bullet. Despite having the weight of a fully grown man, Scott, in his Ant-Man suit, is able to ride ants and jump on guns without causing the wielder to buckle. Heck, he even carries a shrunken tank as a keychain, even though it should weigh thousands of pounds. Ant-Man is a fun movie and a technical marvel, but there's tons of holes when it comes to the abilities of its central character. Whoa, that's so cool, bro! Now look, this is gonna get weird, all right? It's, it's pretty freaky, but it's safe. There's no reason to be scared. Number 10. Nothing about the plan makes sense. Batman Begins The big plan of Batman Begins is to spike the city's water with an hallucinogen and vaporize it with a microwave. The water will go airborne, people will breathe in vapor LSD, and sheer madness will ensue. Water supply won't help you disperse an inhaler. What? Unless you have a microwave emitter powerful enough to vaporize all the water in the mains. Only, this horrible plan is riddled with holes. The water inside the metal supply lines probably wouldn't be vaporized. What about the citizens presumably taking showers and boiling water, thereby inhaling the vapor, then going crazy too early, and completely foiling the plan? Furthermore, wouldn't all the humans in the immediate vicinity just sort of blow up once the microwave was activated? Then again, this film series is seemingly full of magic, as it appears that Batman teleports from the prison to Gotham in The Dark Knight Rises. You missed the spot. If you're working alone, wear a mask. Number 9. Minerva McGonagall's Lifespan – The Fantastic Beasts Franchise Plot holes aren't new to the Harry Potter franchise. For example, the very concept of time-turners opens up a slew of problems that aren't really addressed. But what bugs us the most is the inclusion of McGonagall in the Fantastic Beasts series. Out of here. Go with Professor McGonagall, please. The timeline just doesn't add up at all. McGonagall's age is never explicitly mentioned in the movies, but Maggie Smith was almost 67 when the first movie was released, so we can assume McGonagall is around that. Yet, in The Crimes of Grindelwald, she's teaching at Hogwarts in 1927, and she's already in her 30s. That means she was born in the late 1800s, which would make her much older than 67 by the time Harry Potter strolled into Hogwarts. That was bloody brilliant! Oh, thank you for that assessment, Mr. Weasley. Perhaps it would be more useful if I were to transfigure Mr. Potter and yourself into a pocket watch? Number 8. Doc Tries to Kill Peter – Spider-Man 2 Sometimes logic is sacrificed for a cool visual. Spider-Man 2 is pretty darn perfect, but it contains a baffling decision on the part of Doc Ock. Octavius meets with Harry, who agrees to give him tritium in exchange for Spider-Man. Kill Spider-Man, we'll give you all the tritium you need. A second thought, bring him to me, alive. Harry tells him to seek out Peter, owing to his association with Spider-Man, and he very clearly tells Octavius not to hurt him. Yet, the next time we see Octavius, he's throwing an entire car directly at Peter and Mary Jane. This makes for a fun scene as we know that Peter is Spider-Man and that he'd be able to dodge the car. But Octavius doesn't know that, so why did he throw a car at someone he wanted to interrogate? I don't know where he is. Find him. <laughs> or I'll peel the flesh off her bones. Number 7. Leia Remembers Her Mother the Star Wars franchise. The Harry Potter canon isn't the only one that was negatively impacted by prequels. 
Long before the Fantastic Beast series, the Star Wars prequels opened up some major plot holes in regards to the original storyline. In The Return of the Jedi, Leia tells Luke that she remembers a little bit about her mother, specifically images and feelings. Do you remember your mother? Your real mother? Just a little bit. She died when I was very young. She gets a bit more specific, explicitly mentioning her mother's beauty and personality. Yet in Revenge of the Sith, Padme clearly dies right after childbirth. Newborn Leia couldn't remember anything about her mother, let alone that she was beautiful and sad. We mean, she's right, Padme was those things, but there's simply no way Leia knows that. It's a go. Number 6. Different Body Types Face Off This futuristic John Woo action flick has an engrossing premise. Sean Archer and Caster Troy, respectively played by John Travolta and Nicolas Cage, change faces. Literally. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Through a highly advanced procedure, Sean and Caster swap both faces and voices, successfully allowing them to imitate each other. But the face transplants in this movie don't alter things like body type, height, or muscle mass. The differences in body type are sort of brushed off by Dr. Walsh, who explains that they'll be handled very briefly and minimally, if at all. We'll use laser shears for the hairline, micro plugs for body hair. We'll do an abdominoplasty, take care of those uh, love handles. But what does that mean exactly, and is that really enough? And not to get too graphic, but wouldn't Sean's wife notice something different about her husband? Number 5. Evan's Hands The Butterfly Effect Evan Trayborn uses his journal to time travel and change various things about the past. But once Evan alters the past, the new timeline will be the only one that people remember. You wouldn't believe me, but in this case, it's not even worth trying. For example, if Evan A goes back and changes something as Evan B, no one will know Evan A. That's all thrown out the window with his prison cellmate. Evan proves that he can time travel by impaling his palms as a child, thereby giving himself scars. In the new timeline that he created with the impalement, Evan would have already had the scars and maybe wouldn't even be in prison. Yet the same cellmate from before reacts with complete shock when he sees Evan's hands. Stick mud on there. What you see? What it look like? The signs of the Lord, man, they just come out of nowhere. He has knowledge of both Evan A and Evan B, which, according to the way time travel works in this film, is impossible. Number 4. Face Shot The Karate Kid In this iconic climax to the classic movie, Daniel LaRusso stands on one leg and delivers a winning kick to Johnny's face. Finish him! But to this day, no one can agree on the legality of this move. Many people agree that the kick was legal, but many also argue that it shouldn't have counted. While it's only in the third film of the series that it's explicitly established that the head is forbidden, even Ralph Macchio, the actor who plays Daniel, agrees that the finishing move shouldn't have counted. If the Karate Kid himself thinks it was illegal, then that's good enough for us. This famous crane kick is referenced numerous times in the sequel series Cobra Kai. Maybe this is a clever bit of meta-commentary, with the show referencing the never-ending debate. Since St. Lawrence told me about how you beat him with an illegal kick. Hey, 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 hey. The rules state anything above the waist is legal. Besides, you used that same kick in last year's tournament, right? Number 3. The Infinity Gauntlet – The Marvel Cinematic Universe The MCU is known for their post-credit sequences that introduce exciting new elements to the overarching story. Unfortunately, one of these sequences came back to bite them. At the end of Age of Ultron, Thanos is clearly seen taking the Infinity Gauntlet out of a vault. Fine. I'll do it myself. However, within the timeline of the MCU, this would have occurred years before Thanos actually acquired the Gauntlet from Eitri. The writers of Infinity War, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely, jokingly answered that the one seen in Age of Ultron was a practice gauntlet. It's a funny response, but it really doesn't do much to close the gaping plot hole. What did it cost? Everything. Number 2. The Poster The Shawshank Redemption 
One of the most famous escapes in movie history sees Andy Dufresne tunneling through his cell wall, traversing the sewage pipe and emerging in a culvert outside the prison, where he basks in the rain. It's a wonderful sequence, but it's marred by one major problem. When the guards examine Andy's cell the next morning, they find the Raquel Welch poster hiding the hole in the wall. How on earth did Andy manage to reattach the poster to the wall from the inside? Even if it was taped at the top, the bottom would have loudly flapped in the draft and make noise. Furthermore, a guard would almost certainly have lifted that poster during a routine cell check to look for contraband, thereby finding the hole. Or at least they should have, if they were doing their jobs properly. What do you mean he just wasn't here? Don't say that to me, hey. Don't say that to me again. But sir, he wasn't. I can see that, hey! Think I'm blind? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Water. Water everywhere. Signs. A good 90% of signs works exceptionally well. It's just too bad that everything falls apart with the ending. Swing away, Meryl. Meryl, swing away. In a twist that no one would consider one of Shyamalan's best, it's revealed that the aliens are weak to water. And it's not like a small allergic reaction. No, the water seems to act like acid and melts them to death. So why, pray tell, did these aliens invade a planet that is over 70% water? They could certainly tell that from space, what with the enormous expanses of blue and all. Sure, maybe they didn't know what water was or that it hurt them. But still, maybe next time, do a little preliminary research on the planet you're about to take over? What's the matter? There's a monster outside my room. Can I have a glass of water? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.